mechanics is the theory which rules the micro world of atoms and particles and it is certainly the X factor. Unlike many other areas of physics, it is weird and counterintuitive, which makes it very dazzling and intriguing. However, this area of physics is plagued with many misinterpretations as well as misconceptions. How can a cat be dead and alive at the same time? How can particles exist in two states simultaneously? Is there a parallel universe? Does entangled means things can travel at more than the speed of light? Well, in this video series, I would be clearing one by one all the misconceptions and misinterpretations of quantum mechanics which is both dangerous and misleading for anyone's quest in the field of science. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this fresh series of videos on concepts and misconcepts where one by one episode by episode we would be clearing certain concepts and we would remove the misconcepts. Well, first, in this video, I would like to show you what are the topics that you are covering. As you have already understood from the thumbnail, that this is related to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So, first, we would be dealing with the reasons why misconceptions happen in our day-to-day -day life or in our thinking. And what we should be definitely careful of, so that these type of misconceptions doesn't destroy our rational thinking. We would also look that there is no uncertainty in the uncertainty principle. We will also look a little bit into Fourier transform and the relation with uncertainty principle and the five most common misconceptions. So having laid the foundation, the topics and the target, this is a good time to start. And first we would go back and understand what are the reasons for misconception and what are the things that we should be careful of. Now, if you look into the world of determinism, starting from Rene Descartes, then going up to Isaac Newton, Galileo, uh, then we come up to Maxwell, Albert Einstein, and others, what these determinism actually tells us is that this has got a deterministic behavior, a future is definitely predictable, and all the calculations are something very definite. Now, where, what do I mean by that? This means that our brain perceives the notions a fish to be a fish, a cat to be a cat, a chair to be a chair, and a coffee mug to be a coffee mug. That means there is no dilemma, there is no ambiguity in terms of determining what is called in classical determinism a future that is predictable and everything which is definite. Now the problem comes as soon as our brain doesn't perceive something definite but something a little bit different, all the misconception arises. Let us look into what do I mean by certainty and what are the problems in the next part of our video. So first as you see all this uh, you know, classical determinism actually leads to quantum uh, probability which are started with Max Planck, then with Albert Einstein, Feynman, Dirac uh, and Heisenberg and uh, Max Born and others. That means what was actually uh, definite now becomes nothing is definite. What we get only is a probability and we work in a world of a chance and a range of distribution or a range of data is what is given in front of us. Now trying to understand why I am trying to tell you is that whenever the brain doesn't get anything deterministic or anything which is definite, the brain and the mind tries to perceive certain conceptions, maybe this, maybe that, maybe that is a chance, maybe that, but there is a definite mathematics behind that and that is the reason for misconceptions as soon as we move from classical determinism into the world of probability. So, first of all, what I would like to tell you all is that please do not read wrong definitions. Wrong definitions in terms of quantum mechanics, not only that, but in every sphere of science and mathematics are dangerous. So, you should be aware and should be definite that you are reading the right definitions. There has been uh, you know, ample time when I have seen the colleges and the professor are giving, uh, you know, a kind of a thought or a kind of an idea without examples. Now, as soon as I tell that the 
uh, that the, that gravity attracts things towards the center of the earth or uh, towards uh, downwards and if I say oh, well I cannot give you an example definitely you will start guessing with lot of things which are improbable and which are not true but as soon as I say that see if I drop a glass it will break on the floor you get a picture that is why lack of examples leads to misconceptions superficial understanding obviously when you're reading a context you yourself understand something which is not true and that is called superficial understanding imprecise language that means as we will see soon that uncertainty principle cannot be called uncertainty but something else that means we are uh, understanding as far of our own we have got a superficial understanding and we are making a language which is not a mathematical language and we make, make imprecise phrases which creates a lot of misconception and that is why it is told that in mathematics is a language try to understand in mathematics language not in English uh, you uh, always uh, misinterpret the material that you read that means you do not verify with the right, uh, right professor or lecturer or somebody who is an expert in that subject and you misinterpret and you use the imprecise language which creates, creates all types of confusion as have been uh, you know famously written by Thomas Wolsey that be very very careful what you put into that head because you will never ever get it out that means that as soon as you put something in your head then it is very difficult to get it out so please be very careful okay so uh, also there are certain movies please don't mis uh, misunderstand me interstellar and quantum break then photon and multiverse which shows that you actually travel to a parallel universe and then quantum leap these are uh, for you know uh, for films which are actually made based on the philosophy of quantum physics but it gives the wrong kind of a notion and young students who have just started reading physics or mathematics they fall into a kind of a virtual reality unable to get out and know the real truth so what I would request is that a lot has been written about quantum theory but there has been a lot which has been misinterpreted so please be careful on that stay away from popular science uh, popular science is not always good because it doesn't give you the mathematical or the real rigorous definition and you falls into misconception there are a lot of uh, you know concepts like quantum mechanics in two minutes the weird world of quantum physics I would request to uh, keep yourself away from that and quantum mechanics and consciousness well these are I won't say these are not true or right but there has been a lot of misinterpretation and students or those who have started to read quantum physics please stay away from these start start learning what is the real rigorous mathematical or at least a definition which would give you the right direction okay now that we know what actually is uh, uh, what are the causes of misconceptions I'm sure that you would stay away from this let us go directly into the topics okay there's one more thing that there are a lot of wrong claims which have been made uh, say for example parallel universe this that and you know uh, something spiritual something <laughs> so please stay away from that okay now it is the time that we move into uh, the f uh, basic idea of our video that is uncertainty principle now the uncertainty principle is possibly one of the most interpreted predictions in quantum mechanics common false statements like the more you know the position of particles the less you know in momentum plague discussions on the implications of uncertainty principle now the worst of this mis misconception is the energy time uncertain principle which contrary to popular belief is not even a real principle it is a time that we should address this misconception of the uncertainty principle and put an end to them let us try to understand the real meaning of the uncertainty principle okay so the thing is that if you read the Wikipedia definition which is more of ki kind of a mathematical definition it tells that uncertainty principle is any way uh, a variety of mathematical inequalities right it is an inequality number one asserting a fundamental limit to the accuracy with which the values for certain pairs of physical quantities of a particle such as position and momentum can be predicted from initial conditions right a fundamental limit to the accuracy with which the values of certain pairs etc can be predicted from initial conditions right so it puts up a fundamental limit 
so what the uncertainty principle actually does not say it doesn't say that more you know the position and less you know about the momentum or you cannot measure both the position momentum but particle these are not right and my attempt in this particular video would basically be to remove this misconceptions okay now you see that there are basically uh, two things which are very important in terms of quantum mechanics one is called the position wave function the second is called the momentum wave function all right and these two actually leads to something which is called fourier transforms each other they are fourier transforms of each other now i hope you understand fourier transformation if you don't then i would like to, i request you to just go and quickly look into what is a fourier transformation now what do i mean by their fourier transform it is that the fourier transform is actually a transform that converts a function into a form that describes the frequencies present in the original function now what it happens is that if we take a function say for example x its fourier transform and stretches out to this one and it is not possible to arbitrarily concentrate both a function and its fourier transform now this is very central it is not possible to arbitrarily concentrate both a function and its fourier transform what does it mean it means that the position wave function is narrow and the momentum wave function is more spread out so first concept misconception is that understand that is it is not that we cannot measure it says that arbitrarily it did concentrate both a function and its fourier transform okay so now we come to this part so you see that here it is a narrow peak corresponds to out wave uh, when it is fourier transformed so what i am trying to tell is that when there is a high probability that a particle is going to be measured in a small region then there is a low probability that it will be measured within a sm small momentum range since the momentum probability is spread out so here is the uh, one which is in a small region and here is where it is in the other position that means what we can see from here is that the more confident we are about right when what the measured position of the particle will be less confident we are about what the momentum of the particle will be when measured right so and vice versa obviously right so when we use the word confident instead of being uncertain the name uncertainty principle hence comes as a misnomer since it is not about being uncertain about the position and momentum r instead it is about how confident we are about predicting what the position and momentum will be when measured right so we can use this indeterminacy instead of uncertainty now i would like to uh, make a quick note is that see indeterminacy refers to a situation where the outcome or behavior of a system process cannot be precisely determined or predicted right indeterminacy what means that is suggests that there is an inherent unpredictability or lack of fixed causality in the system uncertainty on the other hand generally refers to lack of knowledge or information about a situation or event it is a state of not knowing what will happen or not having precise knowledge about the probabilities associated with them so you see there is a difference indeterminacy actually says a situation where the outcome or the system process cannot be determined precisely uncertainty says that there is a lack of knowledge or information about the situation or event okay so what the uncertainty principle does not say now say for example i take this kind of an equation don't worry about this i will just explain in plain english what it actually means so here you go you see that the standard deviation which we all know from statistics of q measures of q measurements multiplied by the standard deviation of r measurements is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the expectation value of the commutator of the operators q and r assembled uh, in hats associated with the q or r measurements scaled by a factor of 1 by 2i okay now let me uh, why i am doing this you will come to know this is a more generalized uncertainty principle i will just come uh, now make you a link with that so what i am telling is that there are few things which we need to take care of this statement first is what is called a standard deviation you know that standard deviation is basically the dispersion or how spread out a variable or a measurement is right and there is another thing which is called a commutator 
Now commutator is basically a mathematical operation that tells how two operators Q and R behave when applied to different orders. That means in this context Q and R represent certain mathematical operations or measurements. Okay, so we go to the next part and there is something which is called an expectation value and it is a way to calculate the average behavior of the commutator. It tells us that when we can generally expect when we apply both Q and R operators. And there is something which is called the variability or spread of the Q measurements multiplied by variability or spread of the R measurements. This is calculated using standard deviations. Now what the statement is telling, if you want you can take a, a screenshot of that. The statement is actually telling that when the combined variability of Q and R measurements is at least as large as the average difference we expect to see when applying Q and R in different orders. Here comes the most important thing. So the uncertainty principle is a general statement about two observables. It is a very general statement. It has nothing to do with position and momentum. That is another misconception. There is not just an uncertainty principle for position and momentum, but also one for position and energy, maybe for momentum and potential energy, any two values that we want to relate. Remember that that uncertainty principle is relating the position and momentum is just one particular instance on a general of a more general principle. What is the general principle? This one. If you are applying operators Q and R in different orders, then the expected value is the way that we calculate and the statement is telling that the combined variability is at least as large as the average difference we expect to see. Right? Okay. So we move on to the next. Now, if I take the standard, uh, standard deviation method of uncertainty principle, then what it tells is that the standard deviation of position measurements multiplied the deviation of momentum, that is the P1, are greater than or equal to some quantity. I'm not going into that. Right? Okay, so what do we mean by standard deviation? So higher standard deviation where the curve is, as you can see on the left hand side, is much more dispersed and this is a lower standard deviation. So, the uncertainty principle for position and momentum tells us that when we measure the positions of multiple particles, multiple, many trillions of particles in the same potential, the closer their positions are together, the farther apart each of their momenta and vice versa. So, as you see, there is no point of uncertainty. It is telling that closer the positions are together, the farther apart are each of the momenta. Now, if I take both these equations, we get something like this. Observables, which we call momentum, position, energy, etc., are represented by mathematical operators. The commutator of two operators, Q and R, gives us an information about how these operators behave when we try to measure then corresponds observes simultaneously. So as soon as we are trying to measure simultaneously the observables are uh, represented by this. Okay, so can we summarize what we learned? So you see the first thing is that the variability or spread of the measurements whatever be it Q which is re represented by standard deviation is multiplied by the spread of measurement of R which is also represented by standard deviation right. The average difference or uncertainty in the measurements of Q and R when they are applied in different orders. Third most important what the statement says is that the product of standard deviations Q and R is 1 greater than or equal to the absolute value of the expectation value of the commutator or now and number 2 scaled by a factor of 1 by 2i. Here comes the final statement that how we are linking this one with this. So you see Heisenberg's uncertainty principle which states that there is a fundamental limit so how precisely we can simultaneous measure certain pairs of properties in the quantum world. That means if you try to measure certain pairs of properties, it puts up a fundamental limit. And it implies that more precisely we are trying to measure one property Q, the larger the uncertainty or we would say variability in the measurement of the property R and uh, uh, vice versa. So I, have, I hope this, till this time it is quite clear that it actually puts a fundamental limit and one we measure with Q, the larger, uh, the, 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 the standard deviation spreads more so we cannot find the measurement of the other property. Okay, so let us be very careful that we should not use the word cannot measure. Then what is the word that we are going to use coming up in the next part of our video? 
So uncertainty and Fourier transform is closely related to each other. I would try to give a very non-mathematical and an easy description of what I am trying to mean by this. So historically, the uncertainty principle has been confused with related effects in physics called the observer effect, right? Which notes that the measurement certain system cannot be made without affecting the system. However, Heisenberg utilized such an observed level at the quantum level. Now you see that uncertainty principle is something which is inherent to wave-like systems. My, I mean to say anything which is called uh, happens like wave and we know that from de Broglie's equation that quantum mechanics simply due to the matter wave of quantum objects. Now matter waves as we know behave like wave particle duality and it exhibits wave like behavior. Now if I take wave mechanics then the uncertainty relation between position momentum arises because of the expression of the wave function in the two corresponding orthonormal bases in Hilbert spaces are Fourier transforms of one another. Okay, let us not go into these details. I will cite you a very quick example and you will understand all of this. Say for example, if I take a sound wave, a pure tone is very sharp uh, spike at a single frequency which shows something like this. Now, if I take a Fourier transform, um, let us understand this is a mathematical transformation, right? Those who don't know, those who know, great, you're enjoying this video. So, its Fourier transform would give the shape of the sound wave in the time domain which is a completely delocalized sine wave right so you see it is a sharp spike and here it is a kind of a delocalized sine wave so if i take these two what i can find is that in quantum mechanics whenever we are taking two key points the position of the particle actually takes form of a matter wave right and the momentum actually it gets a kind of a fourier conjugate so one is something which is a spike right and another which is a Fourier conjugate and as soon as we get a Fourier conjugate we get a wider dispersion in terms of standard deviation and it becomes very difficult to calculate so this is one of the most important reason that why I would say uh, you know Fourier transform and quantum mechanics are related to each other okay now we come I hope that this part is clear if you can if you're not you can go back to this and you can understand what actually is that so because this Fourier transform here uh, as I have seen I have shown that it gives you a kind of a, uh, a dispersion of standard waves so that is why the Fourier transforms gives a delocalized sine wave I have not gone into the mathematical details it would be done maybe in, I will do it in the next part of the video okay so we come to the five most common misconceptions about the uncertainty principle. What are those? One by one we will deal with this. The first one is that the uncertainty principle is caused by external dis disturbances. No, some people mistakes, mistakenly believe that the uncertainty principle is a result of technical limitations in the measurement devices. However, the uncertainty principle is not caused by external factors, but it is an inherent property of quantum mechanics as we have seen that it is mostly due to the Fourier transform. One gets transformed into other and there is a uh, dispersion so it arises basically from the wave particle duality and the mathematical relationships between the position and momentum wave functions the second one is that the uncertainty principle implies that the particles do not have definite properties until observed now the uncertainty principle introduces an inherent limit to our knowledge of certain properties of particles it doesn't imply that particles do not process definite properties until measured the properties of particles exist in a state of superposition where they can exhibit multiple possible values simultaneously however when measurement is made we call the wave function collapse and the particle assumes a definite value for the measured property the third one is that the uncertainty principle violates classical notion of determinism classical physics is based on deterministic principle where the properties of particles can be precisely known and predicted the uncertainty principle on the other hand introduces intrinsic limitations to the simultaneous measurements of certain properties in the quantum realm. It does not necessarily violate determinism but highlights the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics where predictions are made in terms of probabilities rather than certainties. 
the uncertainty principle is a result of a lack of knowledge of a technological advancements no the techno uncertainty principle is not a consequence of a lack of knowledge uh, it is a fundamental principle that again arises from the mathematical formalism of quantum mechanics and has been experimentally confirmed through various experiments advances in technology can improve measurement precision but cannot eliminate the inherent uncertainty introduced by the principle itself and finally the uncertainty principle applies to macroscopic objects as well the uncertainty principle is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics and applies specifically to quantum scale objects such as particles while there are such uh, you know uh, quantum effects on macroscopic scale like superconductivity or superfluidity the uncertainty principle does not apply to macroscopic object it becomes negligible and practically unnoticeable at larger scales that means it basically a kind of a cancel out in an average okay so we are done with today's video and what is the summary what are the things that we have learned we have learned that we should be very very careful while talking about selecting definitions we should uh, and for uncertainty principle this is not about uncertainty but it produces or gives the fundamental limit on uh, simultaneous measurements uncertainty principle and fourier's transform are related positions of the particle take the form of matter wave and its momentum is its fourier conjugate uncertainty principle is not at all that uncertain and we have learned what are the five most misconception of the uncertainty principle well i would continue further videos one by one uh, where i would like to remove those misconception and give you if not a math a rigorous mathematics but at least a kind of an understanding of what those equations or physics concept means so thank you very much for watching this video i uh, i would uh, like to request you to please subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon to get all the notification from physics for students you can contact me at this email id and you can also subscribe to my this channel which is exclusive to einstein general theory of relativity further you can follow me on my instagram facebook and linkedin pages thank you for watching this video please put up your comments what do you think about this series going on coming up very uh, quickly another misconception on quantum mechanics till then goodbye and best wishes